Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hey guys, this is Liz Candace. This is Nikki Collins. What up, guys? This is Ethan Clark. Hey, this is Imani Lee Stafford. Hey, this is Jordan Canada. This is Asia Wilson. Welcome to the WNBA Nation. WNBA Nation! What's up, everybody? Kyle Haywood here. Super pumped to talk to all of you today and to uh, really kind of break down some of the most recent happenings in the WNBA and women's basketball across the board. Um, but I'm not going to be doing this solo. I've got a couple of buddies with me. Uh, Jason Snow is with us tonight, everybody. Jason, how are we doing? I am doing so good, Kyle. Uh, I, I've had a nice relaxing week and I just finished the Mandalorian, which means that I'm a little emotional right now, but I am good. How are you doing? <laughs> emotional Jason's my, that's a top three favorite Jason of mine. Just so everybody knows that's a, that's a big deal for me. Emotional Jason's a good Jason. Um, I'm doing well, man. Um, Logan Jones is also on mic with us. Logan, how art thou? <laughs> I'm good. I'm glad to be here. Uh, I'm, I've got the amount of energy that one would expect from a Monday after the Super Bowl. Um, <laughs> I, we're, we're entering what, what I consider to be the doldrums of the calendar year, which is <laughs> like my, my birthday in late January is over and we're entering. This is, this is not an anti Valentine's Day take per se, but just like the beginning of February to like when the college basketball season gets really good in March is just, uh, like bleh. it just sucks there's no like changing of seasons it's it's not a time i look forward to so i i really needed this i needed to jump on with you guys and talk about the, uh, the mandalorian and college women's basketball um <laughs> to just get my mind get my mind on things other than how the next like 30 days or so are just going to be like oh this is this is our payment for enjoying the holidays. It's the month of February. <laughs> February is rough because it's a very slow sports month. Um, fortunately, we do have a little bit of a WNBA free agency that keeps things a little spicy. Um, but it is kind of like you're kind of writing conference play for basketball, for college basketball. Like it is kind of an odd month. And to be honest, I feel like. So we live in, well, three of us, three of the four hosts live in Utah and where, where it snows here, not down in Texas where Jason lives, but it snows here. And I feel like December and January are like white snow months and February is like a gray half full of asphalt snow yep. month. It's the, the slush on the side yeah, of the it's road. It's the month. slushy fro, like refrozen. It's the, it's the freeze. What's that called? Like freezer or f what's the term when you have like, like food like in the freezer? Freezer burnt. Freezer burnt. Yeah, it's yeah, freezer burnt snow. That's you know what I'm saying? Put it. <laughs> and it's not. I I noticed this was was part of it. Um, if you go other places that have snow and like pretty like alpine scenery, a lot of times you have like blue skies and snow on the mountains, and mm -hmm. then like the roads are clear, and you're like, wow, what a beautiful like winter scene. Uh, where we live, it's just like gray on the ground, gray on the sky gray everywhere you look yeah it's just, gray. it's just a gray month very accurate and uh and then we throw valentine's day in the middle of it and we're like this looks romantic gray's the most romantic weather <laughs> i again I'm, I'm not trying to I, I think it's probably fashionable to be like anti-valentine's day and i'm not trying to be that i'm just saying what other holidays are worse <laughs> like just not, pick a worse not one. many there's not many i love it i I actually, I had, I had a friend on Facebook share something the other day, which I don't know if this is true, but they're like, Valentine's Day is named after St. Valentine, who was a Catholic priest, which meant he was single. So like, we get to celebrate too. And I was like, oh, that's a good point. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm down. Like, if the single people want to get down on Valentine's Day, I'm all for it. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. Jag House, Iowa winters worse than Utah. Okay. Maybe that's true. Uh, yeah, Utah winters I, as, aren't actually that bad. It just happens to be, where we live is like there's a lot of inversion uh mm -hmm. like it's a lot of like kind of gross air 
uh, just in particular kind of where we live. There's other, there's other parts of like really close to where we are. Like where I grew up is just like in a little valley, just through a Canyon kind of close to where I'm at now. And it's blue skies all the time. It's actually really, really pretty. Um, but yeah, like we do have some great snow. It's just February. I think it's just comparatively compared to like late November, December, January snow, February snows rough. So yeah. Anyway, I, uh, I, as, as, as the one who's lived in both, I spent four years in Logan, Utah, and then I spent seven years in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, Utah's got it better okay. <laughs> for multiple reasons, but, uh, it, that's actually, uh, that, that, they put that on the license plates here recently. Better than Nebraska. <laughs> better than Nebraska, but not, but not Nebraska salmon. <laughs> Oh, that's a deep cut. Oh, that's that's a, that's deep, a cut. deep cut <laughs> reference. That goes back a couple I, years. I don't think anybody's followed us that, that far. Goes, like, yeah, I, I don't think anyone. I think the only people. Yeah, I think the only people who listen to us now that listen to us back then is the four of us hosts. And maybe like that's the only. And maybe Logan's roommate. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Um, oh, let's let's chat some women's hoops, guys. Uh, some some pretty awesome stuff. Let's let's talk WNBA. First, all right. Let's let's crack some WNBA news here. Um, I'm gonna actually go with the most recent uh, news as it's been coming through. Um, some big, probably the biggest news today, kind of surrounds really just two teams: the Seattle Storm and the Dallas Wings. Seattle had probably a bigger news day, I would say. Um, yep. First of all, we heard that Crystal Langhorn was going to be retiring. Um, which was, uh, I guess, I wouldn't say expected, but understandable, does, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, she's played a great, great career, um, you know, starting to feel like, uh, you know, not necessarily as needed on the court, but she is going to be joining the Storm front office. Um, Logan, we were able to see Crystal Langhorn in person as one of our very first experiences in the league. Um, what was your reaction when you heard that she'd be retiring and, and uh, joining the front office? It got me thinking that maybe Seattle is going to be more vulnerable than I thought going into next season. Like I was kind of resisting that notion um, when, when Alicia Clark left and I was like, nah, you know, I, I really think Seattle's going to be fine. And the more I look at it, the more I'm like, yeah, like Sam Bam and some other, some other really key like pieces of that team are, are starting to retire and, obviously moving on to other things. And when I heard the, the Langhorn news, that was when I first, that's the first sliver of that thought that I really started believing in. It's like, they're still going to be great top tier, top two or three team. But like, does this give an opening to Washington, Chicago, Vegas? Um, yeah. And then, and then other news that dropped today basically erased that entire thought. I, I will miss <laughs> Crystal Langhorn. I think she's a great <laughs> player, but Seattle is going to be fine. So <laughs> I, I'm still even with the the players that have retired and moved to other teams this season. Um, I think Seattle's done as good as they could possibly do in free agency to to be a powerhouse next year. I agree. I th- I think that they've they've held it together fairly well. Um, but uh, and actually, I really really like the move. The other move that they had today, um, adding Candice Dupree. Um, there's we don't know any terms we don't know if it's a multi-year contract a single year like um as far as what i've been able to see um that may have updated i'm not positive but um let me see if there is any i'm just gonna check twitter literally while we're here recording and just see if i can see any (laughs) any updates but yeah as far as the last i was able to see i didn't know any terms um from what uh from what was being um Let's see. Yeah. Not that I can find. Um, yeah. It's yeah. Nothing it on sucks. the official release. Um, like Seattle, Seattle loses a, like a forward who's been an all-star a couple of times. She's been in Seattle since 2014. So like basically this, this extended run that the storm have been on, she's been there for all of it. Yeah. Um, but, mm-hmm. but replacing her with a seven time all-star who's also up there in years and is like a veteran of the league, but can still contribute in a big way in Candace Dupree. Like it makes me feel like that spot is not going to feel vacant. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'd agree with that. Um, I think that, um, I think that, yeah, they're going to be just fine. They're bringing in a few players and I like 
you know, who they've got, uh, even in, in drafting, um, the last couple of seasons, you know, uh, Magbagor and um, Katia Laksa, I think is, could be really, really solid for them. And we've still got this year's draft, you know, like I think that they, they're able to, to pull in a few different spots. Here's my thing. You do lose Crystal Langhorn, who was a little bit back in the depth chart. You know, you've got Stewie and Howard up, mm-hmm. up top and you've got some other uh, players who were getting a lot of, of time, you know, in that front court. Um, but adding Candace Dupree, who is an absolute walking bucket, like I just don't <laughs> Seattle did a good job. They did a good job. I think that yeah. that they still I still think they're the team to beat until someone proves otherwise. I think Washington looks scary good because you know you got Deladon, Misaman, Clark, Ariel Atkins. They've got uh they add, yeah. Did, did I say Tina Charles? Like, they've just got a stacked roster right now. Um, and I'm really pumped to see Washington actually, like, see, have them kind of put it all together. But, and the Lynx look scary good. The Aces look good. Like, I don't know, man. Like, there's a lot of teams that look to have, have added a lot. And Seattle may not, you know, they may be kind of have broken even. And I just want to see if the other teams have made up enough ground to do enough to catch what Seattle, where they were at, you know, these last, you know, two, three years. Um, but yeah, any other thoughts, Jason, any thoughts on, on Candace Dupree, you know, uh, taken out from Indiana, taken off from Indiana and come to join um, the Seattle storm and, and Langhorn retiring. What are your thoughts at there? Yeah, I think, I, I agree with you guys. I think the storm are doing as good as you can. I the the things that usually undermines a potential dynasty is the fact that as you win, your players become more valuable yep. and it becomes harder to keep them inside of your cap space because they can make more money elsewhere. And so you you end up losing your depth and that, that starts to dismantle what would have been a dynasty. So all things considered, I feel like Seattle has held together the roster pretty well. I think they've fortified where they needed to. So I'm I'm really happy with where they're at. Uh, on the flip side, I mean, I know we all love D Rob, but she can't play by herself in Indiana. So I'm, I'm a little bit worried about what's going on over there. Uh, but in Seattle, I'm feeling it's one of those things. I, I really want to find another team and be like, that team's going to give them a run for the money and, and win the championship this year. But every time I look back at Seattle, I'm like, no, they're going to win it. Like, <laughs> I, I just, I, I don't see it not going that way. Like, it's fun to try to figure out who's going to do the upset, but, it really looks like nobody's going to do it. I mean, obviously any team's got a shot, but if I was a betting man, I'd have a lot of money on Seattle for this year. Yeah. That's not, that's not like, don't come at me. If you lose money with that bet, I'm not recommending anything. Just, I I, I don't want the internet to come back at me for that one, but, (laughs) um, a couple other, uh, free agency, uh, you know, kind of some other free agency news. Um, kind of, expected uh from what i thought the dallas wings did re-sign kayla thornton to a two-year um extension of her current contract um i think she's a great piece there in dallas i think that you know she's kind of been uh around for the last little bit for the wings and and i think could could do some real good uh there in dallas and and could kind of bring up i mean she's young but she's like a veteran when you compare her to the rest of the roster for some reason in Dallas, you know, <laughs> like they're all like rookies and, and two second years players. But Kayla Thornton, I think is, is a, a good re-signing there. Um, going back a little bit further. Um, I think let's see what day was that Friday was Friday the fifth. Yeah. Um, last Friday, there was a couple other, uh, deals. Erica McCall, um, heading to, uh, Washington, and uh, basically a sign and trade deal that Minnesota and, and Washington pulled there. Um, Lynx are going to be pulling a couple of picks. And McCall's going to be heading over to Washington as well to join in and add some more depth to that already pretty scary roster. Um, Tina Charles obviously sticking around with the Mystics as well. Um, Kia Vaughn staying in, in Phoenix. Uh, really solid stuff there. Um, Tiana Hawkins. With the Atlanta Dream, two-year deal signed with the Atlanta Dream, and the, I think you got to go back uh, further than that to go to D Rob. We haven't talked to D Rob on the show. We've 
mentioned it on Twitter a little bit. D Rob might be D Rob was kind of huge and impactful for our introduction to the league. She was officially the first player that we met face to face when we got into uh got into the league. And can I just say there may not have been a better like <laughs> there may not have better been a better liaison that the league could have put to us to get us into this league yep. than Danielle Robinson. She's she will always hold a very special place uh, in my heart. And uh, so, yeah, I wanted to see Jason. Um, what did you think when you saw that D Rob signed with Indiana? That's that's a tough one. D Rob is a very fun player to watch. I don't know that you're, she's necessarily a piece you're going to build a team around, except in her personality and leadership. I, I, I think Indiana needs to figure out what their identity is going to be this next year and bring in some, some, some players that can kind of fit that. Whether you know whatever they want to build towards, I, I'm not sure what direction they're going because it's really hard to tell. Yeah. Um, I like seeing her, Indiana. I hope she brings some life to the organization. She's a very fun person. I could see her being somebody who connects with fans. So I think it's good for the organization. I like the move in general. Um, I think she'll also get more minutes. I mean, I, I think she's going to get a little bit more time with the ball in Indiana than maybe she's gotten in the past. That being said, I, I don't know that it's a, a, I don't know if it's enough to, to bring Indiana out of where they are. I'd like to see them make some other moves in terms of, of kind of building some, some scoring and some other stuff around, around what the team they've got now. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Logan, what did you, what was your kind of initial gut reaction when you heard D Rob to the fever? Uh, it, it was kind of like hearing about Carolyn Swords coming back and playing for Vegas, where I, I feel like this is a player that you want in your locker room almost as a player coach more than a player at this point. Mm -hmm, um, yeah. She, Robinson was a starter in the league up until just last year in Vegas. She still played 20 plus minutes a game, but she just, she came off the bench. Um, and that, that was a good spot for her to do that. Yeah. Um, so it's not like she can't contribute on the floor, but I really think this is more of, at least I expect this to be more of a move like, Hey, who can we get that can kind of help lead? Like we talk about the fever all the time as being kind of a directionless personality list team. If you want to inject instant personality and leadership into a locker room, this is one of the best players to do it. Um, so yeah. I think they went out and got D Rob just as much for her attitude and her energy and kind of the, the infectious, you know, excitement that she brings to playing, um, all those kind of intangible things that we, we don't talk about because they're not, they can't be boiled down in, in like quantitative ways. I, I think she brings a lot of that. She, she brings a lot of X factory stuff to a team yeah. that could really use it. And, and to be frank, I think a lot of teams should have looked into this. I think the Dallas wings, the Atlanta dream, like those are teams that I think, could have made this move as well for the same reason. And it was a good get for the fever to, to get her. We love D Rob. Oh, for we, sure. We all love D Rob. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Minnesota sports, 12, 13, uh, our, our good friend in the chat, uh, here on Twitch is saying, I'm kind of shocked. They gave her and Gentel such a big deal and protected deal for both. I agree. Yeah. Um, they're making some <laughs> cash. Like, uh, let me see if I can find yeah. it real quick. D Rob is pulling in 155 K per season guaranteed. and it's a three, three year deal fully protected. So she's yeah. guaranteed that money. And then lavender is pulling 175 K per season and also full protected over three years. Those are two really, really big, like big signings. That, like, that's a yeah. lot of your your salary cap. Now, Indiana, I don't know if the, if maybe they have a harder time like pulling players to, um, to Indiana because of just how they've been the last couple of seasons. Maybe they're not as appealing <laughs> of a team, and yeah. so you've got to shell yeah. out more money to get those players. So. Under normal circumstances, I don't think like if a team like LA, for example, was to pay D Rob that kind of money, I'd be like, what? Like, what are they doing? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, but Indiana's even... not LA. I think Indiana, Indiana right now, at least until they become a contender again, you've got to pay a little bit more money. You've got to be able to and guarantee that money in order to get those players there. I think that guaranteed money mm -hmm. may have been the difference between, you know, maybe D Rob's got, you know, a difference of 15 grand per year at another team. And the other team might be a little bit more in the running for a championship or is in a more attractive mm -hmm. like market, but then you yeah. can get guaranteed money in Indiana. I think that's, I think that's what's key 
for Indiana locking down these two players. I think they're both going to be phenomenal leaders on a on a team that needs leadership desperately right now, especially um especially with uh Candace Dupree, you know, heading out and going to Seattle. Like this is a team who needs leadership and they can provide that. So yeah. We'll see. Mm-hmm. This may I, pan I out see. okay for, for Indiana. I I love Daniel Robinson and I want the fever to be better. And so in theory I like this deal. Um but to give to give two deals to players like like Robinson and, and Gentel Lavender for three years guaranteed a piece for that much money, it, it does really limit their flexibility a lot over the next couple of seasons. And obviously they, they are in need of a rebuild and you know drafting young talent and they, they probably won't be buyers in free agency to get, you know, big name players to Indiana anytime soon. So maybe they're okay with having their money tied up in, in other players. Um, and that no disrespect to Robinson or Lavender. Um, but I, I think the deal we, we do have, we have a comment in our comment section on Twitch that says Gentel coming off two years of injuries and getting three years, 175. That's crazy. I, I agree. I, that's probably not the smartest money decision. Um, even if you're Indiana and you have to pay up to get players. Um, so we'll, we'll see if <laughs> in the future, if that becomes kind of a crutch that, um, they lean on when they don't do anything in free agency. If they're like, well, you know, we're, we don't have any cap space, so we can't, you know, like, I don't want to hear that out of Indiana. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because yeah. that is well, that's a I, pretty risky deal to make. Yep. Yeah. I feel like a lot of times as, as spectators of what's going on, we, we try to figure out how they're playing 3D chess. And I'm going to do that in a minute. Yeah. But I think sometimes <laughs> you take what you can get. I, I liked Kyle's point of, you're Indiana. I don't think players are, are itching to go there by any means. And so you've got to offer these perks to, to bring in some, some bigger names. Now, that being said, if I'm trying to figure out why they're making these moves in particular, one way I could see them going is putting, taking in younger players that they want to develop and then bringing in D Rob and Gentel Lavender and using those players to develop that future squad. And you don't really need to have your money freed up because you're bringing in first, second, third year players that, you know, you don't, you know, you're not worried about cap space with them as far as how, how pay structures in the league. So I could see that being the direction they're going where they're going to get a young team, have a couple of veterans that, that have a really good culture, you know, not necessarily the, the star athletes of the league, but definitely mm-hmm. the type of people who bring in and set a good culture for a young team, help develop those players. And maybe this is the, you know, a four or five year plan for them to, to really have a strong chance, you know, in 2026, you know, that, that may be the, the type of vision they're having right now. Maybe, maybe that's what bugs me about it so much is it feels like they've been three years away from being two years away for <laughs> so long. And it's like, I, I would love for them to accelerate their timeline a little bit instead of playing the long game. Yeah. Um, yeah, but at the same time, Minnesota, like I, Minnesota just like skipped rebuild. Yeah, exactly. They literally and, had and like, other teams have they too. had like half a season where they were like, like they didn't even miss the playoffs. Like they literally just were like, um, yeah, we lost yeah, like man. five of our like we lost five of our most iconic players. So how about we just grab a couple rookie of the years and then be right back in title contention in twenty twenty one? Like, what if if a team like goodness. If a team like Dallas or Atlanta succeeds at like quickly coming back from the brink of being irrelevant back into like playoff mode, it's going to make Indiana look really bad. Uh, yeah. I, I don't yeah. include New York in that because New York did go all in on a rebuild, but they also happened to get a number one pick and, and draft Sabrina, which, you know, if things fall the other way, maybe Indiana gets to do that, but they didn't. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, if, if Sabrina leads New York into relevancy, I'm not going to hold it against the fever. They got it. They, they kind of got screwed in, in their draft. <laughs> but, yeah. I think they have been in like in the running and likely to get the number one pick like several times. And then it always went yeah. to Vegas and New York. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like a, well, <laughs> yeah, sorry if, guys. If Dallas is like, Hey, we, we took a year or two where we realized we weren't very good and we got the pieces together to be a young team. And you know, they grew into a playoff squad. They're, they're going to make it look easier than Indiana has has made their their rebuild look because it's oh been, absolutely it's been jammed for a little while now. Yep, absolutely, I agree. Um, so let's see. Uh, not too much else that I wanted to cover in uh in free agency. That's kind of the big. Uh, those are kind of the big uh name ones. Um, 
we did mention, uh, oh, I don't know if we, we mentioned, but Dierica Hamby, uh, getting an extension with the Aces through 2022. Um, that's pretty solid. I mean, back to like just an absolutely incredible player should be starting on just about any team in the league. Like it's so nice when you have her come off the bench and you like gain. Like if if your team like increases in their offensive output at, when Hamby comes onto the court, like that's just that's a really great signing. I love her role there in Las Vegas, and I think she loves it too. She seems to have a really solid relationship with her teammates. There is one other signing, and usually I don't even like I pay attention to them, but we wouldn't bring this up on a show um, under normal circumstances. I'm literally just bringing this up because it's a personal like I paid attention to this one. Joiner Holmes signed a training camp contract with the New York Liberty. And if there's a team currently that I think Joyner Holmes could benefit, like that she could benefit them and that they could benefit her, it's New York. I think it's a great, like, I I, I think that uh, having her be available for New York um, is big. And I, I'm really excited to uh, I think that there's a likely like I think that she's probably the the training camp contract that I've got my eye on is like that really could turn into something long term. There's several other training camp contracts, a lot of, you know, um, former draft picks that are going back to their teams for training camps because, you know, look at what training camp and seasons were like the you know last year and whatnot. So I think that a lot of teams are, are going to bring in some players uh, that maybe perhaps didn't really get a truly fair shot. Um, Mm-hmm. But I really like uh, I really like that Joyner Holmes uh, New York Liberty pickup. I think that I think that she could find a good spot there. Um, before we head over, we're going to talk a little bit of uh, NCAA women's hoops. Before we do that, uh, Jason, would you mind uh, sharing with our listeners a little bit about our sponsor of today's episode, Knowable? Yeah, so today's sponsor is Knowable. Knowable.fyi is where you can find in-depth training courses on all of the different life skills and business skills and all the different things that you want to know. It is audio-based courses. So if you've heard of Masterclass, things like that, what this is is it's audio versions of courses where you can sit down and listen to it. Um, it goes episode by episode. You learn skills. Uh, you can learn things about how to take care of your house, how to organize. You can learn things about business, how to talk to people, how to make sales, all sorts of different skills. Whatever you're wanting to learn, they probably have something that will teach you how to do it. And it's so much more than just like an organized podcast. It comes with uh, workbooks. It comes with with quizzes and tests to keep you up on your stuff. All the different things you could want it to be. Uh, we strongly encourage you to check it out and learn something new. That's over, over at noble.fyi. Wherever you're watching this, there should be links in the description uh, so you can find at, you can go there, check it out. If it's something that you would like to do, if there's something that you would like to learn, when you sign up for that annual subscription, use code WNBA Nation at checkout. That's going to do two things. It's going to get you 20% off, and it's going to give a kickback to us, which helps support the show, which we greatly appreciate. So um, we've all had accounts with them for a few months now. Uh, since they first reached out to us, we all set up our own accounts and and got to know the system and have been learning great things. Um, it's a great service. We strongly recommend it. We think you'll have a lot of fun there. Again, that's noble.fyi and make sure that you use code WNBA Nation. Absolutely. And for those of you listening to the episode, uh, you've probably heard us talk about this the last little bit. We are always live on Twitch as we record. Um, and we also have a lot of extra bonus content happening over here live. Um, a lot of you come over and hang out with us, but we want more of you to come see us. We want more of you to come and, and chill and be a part of, of what's happening here on Twitch. Some of you are thinking, Twitch, I'm barely on Twitter. I'm barely listening to the podcast. That's the extent of my, my technological interest in this. Trust <clears throat> me. Logan. <clears throat> <laughs> Trust me. It's, about. it's worth setting up an account it's a blast you get to talk live as we record we also have additional bonus content we sometimes have just live q a's where we just sit and hang out and chat about different topics with our uh you know with, with those of you in the chat and we just kind of get to know we we build it's a fun community to just sit and hang out as we do some of our interviews we'll probably be doing several of those live on Twitch you can actually interact and in, and put some questions in the chat live as we do those interviews um 
and uh and it's just an awesome place to come and be uh and there's a lot of you know pre-record and post-record uh extras that we get plus we'll be playing some uh we'll be playing some games on here as well we'll have uh some nba 2k that we'll be running on on the channel that you can come hang out and experience and then uh you know we've been doing a little bit, bit of creating through uh minecraft some basketball uh real wmba related content on minecraft just just extra stuff that it has no real like it's not necessary but it's fun and it's the off season. Just come hang out. Okay. It's a blast. Uh, <laughs> so, Logan, where else can people reach us and, and get in contact with us if they so desire? Yeah, you can uh, interact with us obviously on Twitter at WNB nation pod. You can also review the podcast anywhere where you can listen to podcasts with a five-star review and we will read it on air and shout you out for being a cool person and helping us uh, get in front of other people who are looking to uh, it, looking for an avenue to get into the WNBA and women's basketball. Um, the women's sports discussion is always going on on Twitter. We uh, get to be on the positive side of things, which is fun. Um, <laughs> so please come <laughs> check us out there and help us out. Um, but yeah, we, you know, we love interacting with people here. It really, it's fun to get on Twitch and see people on the message boards and comments under the links that we share. And, you know, when Daniel Robinson signs that big three year deal, like we love sending out the tweet. And, and seeing people react and being like, that is some money. Like, you know, just being a part of that discussion constantly is, is a lot of what makes being a follower of the league a lot of fun. Absolutely. Um, sweet, guys. That kind of runs the the deal as, as far as where people can most find us. Uh, check us out on YouTube as well. You can actually watch our uh, recorded live streams and different things. Most of the time we get those over to YouTube. Um, sometimes we don't, and that's okay. We just... We usually throw over some of the better content onto the YouTube page to get some highlights mm-hmm. there. Um, and a lot of times the YouTube uh, channel does include some of the, I guess, the stuff that ends up on the cutting room floor of these actual podcasts. So we get into a little bit of depth uh, on some different topics and sometimes get a little distracted. Um, I think we had like a 20 minute discussion on Sonic the Hedgehog video game music. Um, at one point, <laughs> I, that was, that's been a while, but that was, so you never know. Uh, there's some extra bonus content over there at, at different various points as well. Um, guys, let's talk NCAA hoops. I think we got to talk about the big elephant in the room, the big South Carolina Yukon game tonight. Um, yeah, that was a absolutely, that was a, I don't even know how to describe that game. It started out terribly and stayed. <laughs> And stayed terrible, but ended so memorable. Like, it's so, like, I don't even, I can't even say it was a good basketball game. If if you were to tell me, hey, the number one team in the country and the number two team in the country are facing off against each other, and they both have, like, Hall of Fame level coaches uh, who have ties to USA basketball, and, uh, and, and both UConn. have... And, UConn's going to score nine points in the fourth quarter and they're going to win. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like that's the type of game. That's and, the type of game we, we were looking at. And, and you've got a freshman who drops 30 plus points and hits a, a game winning three in overtime to upset the number one team. I would tell you, wow, sounds like a really good game. It kind of wasn't for a while. <laughs> so I just wanted to hear your guys' thoughts and takes on this, on this game. Uh, Jason, just kind of first off, what was, uh, I know, I know you're kind of following it here and there, uh, as you had an opportunity. What were you, what were your thoughts as you saw that UConn upset number one, South Carolina tonight? I mean, I, we talked, we actually talked, I believe about these two a few weeks ago on our podcast and, the idea that one is massively better than the other, I, I don't think anyone believed. Uh, obviously, South Carolina has been looking really good, uh, but UConn has looked good too. So I, I'm not super surprised. What I'm more surprised about, and I wasn't able to watch the game live, so you guys will have more of a feel of what was happening. But the conversation that I saw going on was that it wasn't clean. Uh, you know, looking at the stats, you've got UConn shooting 11 behind, 11% behind the arc, or UConn was 13% behind the arc, and, uh, South Carolina was 11% behind the arc. Uh, 53 from the field, UConn 37 from the field. Uh, uh no, or 39 from that's, the field. That's from free throw. South Carolina oh, was 53 yeah. from free throw, and UConn was 37 from free throw. Yeah, okay. They couldn't so, even make free throws in the game. It was, it was anyways, rough. So, yeah, all that feeds into the point that I was making, which was that, 
like to to see both of these teams struggle is and to see the conversation be centered around that is what surprised me the most. So I'm I'm itching to look at some highlights from this game. So I'm kind of curious what your guys' thoughts are. But what I saw going on in terms of the conversation online was very surprising to me that these two teams struggled so much uh, going through this game. Logan, I, I want to hear your take. Uh, basically, outside of a freshman and a couple sophomores, there was no performance from just about anybody else on the court. Uh, it was chuck full of turnovers on both sides of the court. Um, couldn't hit a free throw. Um, UConn had one player in double digits, and that was their freshman, Paige Beckers, who dropped 31, but only went one for six from behind the arc. So, yeah. What, what uh, was your take on this game? Here, two things, and we'll go in reverse order because you just mentioned uh, Paige Beckers. She's the only women's basketball player to play at UConn who has gone for 30 plus in three consecutive games. That's Isn't that weird? an insane stat. Yeah. Um, That's a because, ridiculous stat. Just because stat. of all the players that have gone through there, you'd think it would have happened by now. It is crazier to me, the reason I'm doing it in this order is it's crazy that it happened in such a crappy, bad game. Let's call it what it is. We've been dancing around it. It was not a 100 to 98 slugfest between two powerhouses. It was a game of attrition. And it was a game where you might look at a typical box score and pick out numbers like you'd see in this game and be like, oh, I bet that team lost. And instead it's like, no, like the... South Carolina owned the battle of the boards, but it's because they couldn't hit a freaking shot. So like there were, yeah. there were just rebounds to go around. And uh, like you said, the UConn starting lineup, everybody scored about six points over the course of 40 plus minutes. And then Becker's basically carried her team by scoring her half, half the, you know, providing half the offense. The, the telling stat for me, and if, if you watched the game, you could tell something was wrong. You you would watch it and just be like, this feels like there's all these stoppages and off. there's turnovers and there's missed shots. What's going on? The stat that's telling is uh, South Carolina only getting to seven assisted. Yes, that's, that's the one I was yeah, looking that's at. That's what tells you what the ball movement and what the offensive flow was like for the mm. Gamecocks. And that's, that's not going to yeah. win you a game against the, even in a bad game where you're in it because you're a great team and the other team in front of you like isn't playing great either like even in a bad game you you have to have that number i mean i I think uconn had twice that right they had like 15 Mm -hmm. yeah it was 7 to 15 like that that tells you kind of what the fabric of this game was like for south carolina it just wasn't in the flow of what they typically do to teams obviously because they ended up with 59 points at the end of the day but ultimately, I know this is dissatisfying, but I'm not drawing any conclusions from this outcome. I think I think UConn <laughs> mm-hmm. should be happy. I think Paige Beckers is a stud. Uh, they should be happy with the win. But you know, I, I'm looking at the the college rankings right now, and I I think the top tier of the the top five or six teams, there's not any separation there. Yeah. Um, and I. If, if UConn is the overall number one for the rest of the season because of beating the number two or, or the, the then number one from the number two spot, uh, if they if they move into that position, that's fine. Obviously, they're well coached. If we have a tournament, they're going to go far. We all bank on that. But you don't want to rely on a player going for 30 every night so that you can squeak by in an overtime win. That's not <laughs> a key to success in, in you know, basketball's postseason, which is single elimination. So yeah. it, it was a bad... It, it was, it was the game. Super Bowl. It was, it was the two best teams playing to an unsatisfying, like, 40-minute, like, oh, I guess the team we all kind of thought was going to win won, but in a way that was just kind of gross. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know. I, I think that, uh, yeah, I'm glad you brought up the assist stat because it, it's, it was pretty appalling. And even UConn didn't do great. They had 15 assists, which, considering how poorly they shot, that's actually pretty impressive. And here's the thing. I... I'm not one of those player, one of those people who need to have like you know triple digit like scoring outings from teams to enjoy the game. I love great defense. To be honest, part of the reason why we love the WNBA is because of the amount of hard nosed defense that you see by the women in the league. Like that's a huge, huge part of what I love about basketball. The difference between that and today's game is it wasn't that there weren't open looks like the teams were getting open looks <laughs> and just missing them. Like nothing looked good. It just seemed sloppy. The ball was just kind of everywhere. It was 
physical. There was fouls not being called for long stretches and then fouls being called like that seemed to be kind of phantom there, calls. There was just no flow at all to the game. It just was just a ugly, ugly 30, game. 38 turnovers in this game and it, and it yeah. felt like more. If, if I, <laughs> if, you know, that sounds very low. It seemed yeah. that, that may be official turnovers, but as far as like loose balls and kind of the, like it getting knocked around or tipped out of bounds, like that was constant. It was constant that the ball was, you know, a pass would go and it would get tipped out of bounds by defense. So technically it's not a turnover, but you don't, it it takes, it removes the flow from your offense. It just seems so broken so much of of the night. And so it was a little frustrating for me to see, you know, like, especially on a, uh, you know, FS1 um, national stage, number one, number two, hopefully a lot of people tuning in to just see some ugly basketball, unfortunately. It, it didn't convince me that UConn is the best team in the country. No. And I, I would have liked mm-hmm. to come out of this game believing that the winner was the deserving, like that's, they're kind of carrying the torch. And instead, yeah. it just muddies the water a little bit. Like I said, I think you could go down to Stanford and Texas A&M and even Baylor and and conceivably say like that that could be the number one team right now. Well, and yeah. to be to be fair, we've all played in games like this, whether it's football or basketball <laughs> or, or whatnot, we've played in games like this where it's like, we're both playing terribly. And it's just like, no matter yeah. what we do, you can't break out of it. And it's just who can grit their teeth and get out of it. Like, and unfortunately for South Carolina, they flubbed it away really bad in the, yeah. at the end of regulation, they should have been plus six. I don't know how many <laughs> missed layups there were between these two teams. I feel like, and I love Olivia Nelson Adota. I think that she's going to be, she has a great future in women's basketball. I think she's going to be a big deal in the league. I don't know how many layups she missed tonight. Like it was, <laughs> it's just, it was, and I'm not do, calling her out because I'm being, she would agree with chart. me. If, if you know, if you know Olivia Nelson Adota, you know she's agreeing, right? She's like, yeah, it was ugly. And so I, that's not me coming down on her. That's just the reality of what happened. It was just, it was rough. Um, I do want to I do want to give one shout out to Aaliyah Boston from South Carolina. Actually had a really solid outing um other than her three point shooting. She went uh 17 points, 15 boards. That's a really solid outing. Uh and then you add to the fact that she had two steals and three blocks, which by the way, were the only steals and blocks of any starter from South Carolina. There was only one other steal and one other block on the entire team. Um, and she actually shot pretty well. She shot just shy of 50%, eight for 17 from the field. She had a decent game and, but it just seemed like everyone else around her just couldn't get anything going. And, and uh, it, it was just tough. It ended up feeling more along the lines of a, a Beckers versus Boston, like head to head matchup. And that's kind of almost what it started, what it ended up being. So Anyway, not to spend too much time on, on that game, um, but I do want to shout out another incredible game um, that was also happening tonight that I, I, I want to shout out. Arizona taking down... So number 10, Arizona, taking down number 11, Oregon, by 20. By 20. Like, absolutely destroyed the, the Ducks tonight. Arizona is looking very good right now. Like they look really solid. They had four games straight postponed, but uh, they're on a four game winning streak. Every one of those has been in very convincing fashion. Um, they've only lost two games. And one of those to was, was to number one Stanford uh, at the time, number one Stanford. And then the other one, it was to a Washington state team, which if you're paying attention, Washington state is no, they're no slouch. Like that's a decent team that could beat just about anybody on any given night. So, um, and that was a two point, that was a two point loss. That was, that was kind of a, you know, last minute, last bit loss there. Arizona, it might be, might be the best uh, team uh, in, in the West right now. Yeah. They've got a chance to avenge that loss. That's their next game is on Friday. They host Washington state. uh, And then 10 days after that, they will play at, uh, currently number five Stanford. So they can potentially avenge their two losses on the season by, by the end of the year. And I'm interested and, to see if they can pull it off. And the way they're playing right now, it would not surprise me. They looked absolutely dominant on both ends of the floor tonight against that Oregon Ducks uh, squad, which 
in and of themselves, Oregon's a solid team as well. I mean, they're nine and four in conference. They're 12 and four overall. Like they're a good team and just now, Arizona had their way with them. What, it was very impressive about, tonight. They Arizona is easily my number two pick for the Pac-12 right now, but the game yep. against Stanford looms large because they lost to Stanford big. If I'm, yes. if I'm remembering yeah. right, it was, it was like a 30 point game. Yeah. So I'm wondering if they're going to be able to rally a little bit. Stanford's faded down the standings a little bit, but they're still great. Arizona's obviously climbed. Maybe that Oregon win will kind of propel them to that next gear. But Arizona Stanford is definitely going to be one to watch in about, oh man, this month is so freaking long. In about <laughs> 14 days. It's literally the shortest yeah. month, it's, but no, I know but what you it's mean. Not. It's the <laughs> longest month. It's the, by far, it's the longest month. <laughs> so two weeks. Yeah. You got a couple of weeks. Jason, what were your thoughts when you saw this score? Yeah, I think I think Arizona has a chance. I, I agree the take that they've got to overcome the Stanford thing, and, and that'll likely come uh, through hopefully the Pac-12 tournament and stuff. If Arizona can carry this momentum, they sometimes the the conference championships and the the NCAA tournament is about just who's the best team. I mean, that's what we saw when UConn won it several years in a row. Sometimes it's about who's hot at the right time. And Arizona has the feeling like maybe they're getting hot at the right time. Um, And so with that, I mean, currently they're ranked number 10. I think there's a decent chance if they're able to to pull up over Stanford as, as they come to the championships. I mean, there's no reason they couldn't come into this as a one seed. And if that were the case, I mean, it, it'd be, it'd be fun to watch. I, I think they may be a team that's hot at the right time. So I really like it. Um, They had great play. Like you look at their box score and it's the exact opposite of what we saw from UConn and South Carolina. Yeah. Um, I mean, Kate Reese went three for three from the line. The team as a whole went nine for 15 from beyond the arc. Uh, I mean, you had what four different players in double digits, just great performance all around. So I really enjoyed seeing it. And, uh, as, as a West Coast fan in general, um, I'm a big fan of the Pac 12 and a lot of the teams over there. Um, I'm really excited about what you see coming out of the Pac 12 right now. For sure. For sure. I think there's a lot of really solid potential and, and some teams that could be dangerous down the stretch. Um, guys, that's, that's pretty much all we've got right now. Uh, obviously there's going to be a new number one coming soon. Uh, do you have any, predictions other than UConn that you think potentially could make a case for the number one spot? Not really. I think, I think UConn will get it naturally just because when a one loses to a two, I, I don't think it's, <laughs> I don't think it's fair to do anything else, but I think right. Louisville is still creeping. Uh, I, I think they could Louisville and Stanford both have chances to move back up top Stanford, especially because the, the back 12 is so tough and they play a lot of tough opponents. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. voters might like that. So, well, and I like uh, you know Louisville t- took care of business after dropping that game to NC State, yeah. which is a great team, by the way. Um, you know they took care of business against Boston College and Notre Dame. They've got a tricky game against Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech is is one of those teams that I feel like is just sneaky against uh, a lot of teams this year, and so I'm excited to see what happens. Uh, with Georgia Tech uh, and Louisville, I think that's that's a game to watch. But I look at the rest of their their schedule. I don't see them having a major issue the rest of the way. I think that they might end the regular season just with the one loss, um, which I I think at this point, as long as they don't lose more than one, I think they are likely a lock for a number one seed in the tournament. So, mm-hmm. um, I th- yeah, I think it'll be really cool to see Louisville, uh, NC State. <laughs> I love NC State. They're just, I just. <laughs> it's going to be a problem if we if we have to pick against them. Come, uh, I don't come know bracket. what to pick when I see an NC State game. Their last three games, they lost by fourteen, or excuse me, lost by twelve to Virginia Tech, then throttled Louisville by fourteen, and then lost by seven to UNC. Like. <laughs> <laughs> they bookended their their upset of a number one squad by losing to Virginia Tech and UNC, which I'm not, you know, nothing wrong with those teams. Those teams are in the bottom half of the ACC, though. Like those aren't yeah. top half teams. Those are bottom half of the of the league teams that you're dropping games to after. Like, I just yeah, I don't know. I don't know what yeah. to think about NC State. 
Yeah, my my read when you see a team do that is usually that it's a team that's playing emotionally, so they get up for a game and they play for it, and if they're down for a game, they, they don't necessarily play. Um, and the danger with that is no matter how talented you are, if you're an emotional team, it's hard to carry that all the way through a tournament. So I, I just don't see them necessarily having the endurance to make it to you know a Final Four type situation. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that that's kind of my read on NC State right now. I mean, if I had to reorder it, I think... I think Logan's right. I think UConn takes the number one seat out of default because when you beat the number one, you generally should be considered the number one. Yep. Uh, I'd, I'd bump Louisville up to number two, Stanford to number three, South Carolina, and I'd drop NC State just because I, I don't know what to expect out of them day in and day out, and that's not what you want from a championship team. You want uh, you want consistency. So I'd agree. Um, we got Jaghouse in the chat saying uh, Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, Michigan's they, a good, good team. They've, on, yeah, they've, they look good, they've yeah. only lost one game. And uh was it to North was it Northwestern? No, who did they lose to? I'm blanking right now. Was it Northwestern? I'll have uh, to pull it up o- real quick. Ohio State. That's who it was. It was just Ohio State. Yeah. But but Northwestern just beat Ohio State. That's what it was. Um but I, Ohio State's a good good team and Michigan only lost by four, and it was like it was at Ohio State. So Michigan's a good squad. I'm, I think that what's going to happen is the Big Ten are going to beat each other up like crazy. And then they're co- going to come in and they're going to surprise several teams. I think that yeah. the Big Ten is going to do better in the tournament than people will realize. Like, that's my prediction. I think the Big Ten is going to come into the tournament underseeded and underrated and put a lot of people on notice because I think it's a better conference than they're getting credit for. They struggled out of conference um, and then are just beating each other up. Like they're all like, there's a lot, there's so many good teams right up at the top. Maryland, Michigan, Northwestern's looking good. Ohio state, obviously Indiana. And then you've got teams like Iowa that I don't know what, what to think of Iowa, you know, other than Caitlin Clark's absolutely phenomenal, you know, I don't know They're but they're six and six in conference. I don't know what their March is going to look like unless they turn some things around here soon. So anyway, any last thoughts on, uh, on in NCAA ball guys? Uh, I go on. I I'm just seriously hoping nothing throws off the idea of us having March madness this year. Obviously yeah. it's going to be different. They're going to protect the players um, and player safety first. We, Logan and I just went through this uh, with the NWHL and them having to call off their playoffs because of COVID stuff. So uh, we want the players to be safe, but if they can figure out a way to do that safely. Um, last year, I designed a t-shirt for our merch store, which I never actually posted. So it never went for sale, but it, it was titled the March Without Madness. And I just, I really can't do that again, guys. Let's, let's get oh, some basketball this year. That'd be, that's the saddest shirt we've ever put out. Yeah. Well, and <laughs> it, it never, it never hit market. Cause I was just like, no, it's, it's too sad. Like maybe, maybe, maybe for Twitch streamers at some point, I'll, I'll show the design so that you guys can see what I created. Cause I still have it, but I was yeah. just like, it was just too sad. I, I was like, nah, never mind. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, I don't know if I could bring myself to support that one, but <laughs> <laughs> Logan, uh, you had a, you had a thought on NCAA. Just the, I, I know we, this show goes out to a lot of South Carolina fans and I know how they get. Don't despair. We're not out on you guys yet. Um, I looked at your schedule. You got six games left. You're probably going to win all of them. Um, so <laughs> uh, Texas we, A&M to, to round like out the season's tough, but Texas A&M is really good. I think they're underrated right now. Yeah, I think a one loss Texas A&M team deserves to be. I think they're a top five or six team, and they're just not. Yeah, there's no, there's no way that. Oh, they are in six in the latest rankings. I thought they were. Oh, they were in. They were down. They they moved up. Yeah, they were like seven or eight before. Um, Texas A&M is good. South Carolina fans, I feel like they think we don't like them. We love South Carolina. We think it's phenomenal. (laughs) We've had both Don Staley and Asia Wilson on the show, and like we're a hundred percent behind South Carolina. We we discussed at length the Asia Wilson statue. Yeah, we we love South Carolina. Don't take today's conversation as a as a knock on that. I'm glad you brought that up because we've had them come after us in the past, and 
isn't warranted. I, if, <laughs> in, if you're going to make a poll that would include Asia Wilson, don't exclude Asia Wilson. Don't Asia exclude Wilson. Asia Wilson. They will be, they will hang I, you. I, I, just, bad. <laughs> I, I think everyone who listens regularly knows this by now, but I have no affiliation to a lot of the, the women's basketball powerhouses. So like, I don't have a Notre Dame thing. I don't have any love for UConn. Like, I love seeing dynasties lose, so like maybe that makes me a little anti UConn, but like I'm not against them either. I think Coach Gino's great, so like I, I don't have any any bias here other than like if you're a Mountain West rival of Utah State, and even then, probably not much. So like, <laughs> yeah, even then, I'm kind of cheering it's, you on. It's, like Fresno's it's not coming having from a good a season, place. you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like Boise, I, I don't I don't like Boise State. That's the that's it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's that's what we'll that's what we'll take away from it. Um, guys, thank you so much for hanging out tonight. Those of you who are here on Twitch, uh, for those of you listening, we appreciate it. Um, go ahead and click the link in our description that will send you over to Knowable. Um, we're we're super excited about that. They're they're a phenomenal sponsor. We we would not put this out there if we didn't actually believe in the product. Um, more of you need to check this out. I'm just t- I'm just saying it's a really really cool product i feel like it's been a huge blessing in my life it's benefited me directly and so we're, we we really do want to share that with you um but go ahead and check that out um uh let's see yeah any anything else that we need to hit before we go ahead and sign off guys i'm just really glad we didn't talk about the super bowl <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I was sick of it like three days ago so yeah <laughs> I'm I'm a football guy and I'm telling you there's there's not much to talk about. <laughs> so yeah. All right. Well for WNBA Nation, I'm Kyle Haywood. I'm Jason Snow. I'm Logan Jones. And we got you next time.